Oh hi there, my name is Sam Kaplar, and in today's episode of Phonage, I will be bringing you an exclusive preview of iOS 5 for the original iPad. Just to prove to you that I am using iOS 5, I'm going to go into my settings, and there you are, iOS 5.0. What's new in iOS 5? Well, that's a very good question. What is new in iOS 5? Well, you have the new notification center, just the same in Android. I just received two emails which will allow me to demo this notification feature. As you can see here, Jake Oliver is following me on Twitter, and that shows me a little excerpt from the email. If I press on the email, it of course goes to the mail app and allows me to read said email. The push notification system is still in place, as you can see here on the App Store. Of course, iCloud is a new feature in iOS 5, and it allows you to back up online your mail, contacts, calendars, reminders, bookmarks, notes, and your photo stream. With the storage and backup, you get 5 gigabytes free online storage and you can buy more storage. Unfortunately, when you do try and purchase additional storage, it says purchasing additional storage is not possible at this moment in time. iOS 5 also comes with the new Twitter integration. As you can see here, I've linked my Twitter account simply by putting in my username and password, as you would expect. What else is new in iOS 5? Well, there's a new reminders feature. This allows you to note down little reminders and then when you finish them, you just tick the edge and then you go to completed and it shows you what reminders that you have completed. As you can see, I've already completed a few little reminders just to demo how the feature works. Where's the iPod feature gone, Sam, I hear you ask? Well, it's now changed from iPod to simply music. If we go into the music interface, we can see that it's completely changed from 4.3. The way in which that you can change between tracks has changed too. For example, if I was to go to a random album, let's say I Am The Tower by Lapfox Tracks, and I was to play something, in 4.3 that would flip round to a, a sort of light box area where you could just see a big picture of the album. However, on this, it doesn't do that. It sticks to a little area where you can simply and easily change between the tracks. I kind of like that. I, I like not having to come out of the light box to change between tracks. iOS 5 also features a messages feature. I actually don't know anyone else on the message system, so I unfortunately can't demo this for you, so I apologize for that. There is a new keyboard feature on iOS 5, which, as you can see here, it allows me to undock the keyboard and split it. If I split the keyboard, as you can see here, it allows me to type quite easily with my two thumbs at the side of the device. This is a really good idea for people who wanted to type on their device with two fingers on either side of the device, but couldn't do it with the 4.3 keyboard. If I simply undock the keyboard, that allows me to just move it away from the bottom and move it in, well, any position really. That's all I have to say today on this exclusive preview of iOS 5 for the iPad. If you'd like me to demo anything else, feel free to ask in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like, favorite, and all of that jazz. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more of me around the interwebs, you can go to youtube.com forward slash iamkaplat and twitter.com forward slash samkaplat. I look forward to seeing you all on Friday.